thank you for, to you two for fixing my XMS. So we can continue uh, with the second uh, session of this meeting. And it's the continuous integration. One thing is on open printing, I've, I've done a lot of coding, uh, Google Summer of Code contributors, and before, the Google, before we worked with the Google Summer of Code between 2006 and 2008, when in my first, in, in the first printing summit, which I've organized, we decided, we uh, announced that we switched to the PDF-based print workflow. There we had contributors made a lot of filters for the PDF workflow. Then there came the Google Sum of Code and more contributors and a lot of code and CUPS filters. And in other parts of, uh, of open printing, but we did not really invest time in, te in automatic testing. But Mike Sweet with CUPS, he, he did a lot on, on that. He did, he did automatic testing with every with every commit with different tools for cups and also for his other other uh, projects like Papel, Lprint, and so on. And what we want to do is that in the future we want to get this testing be done in the whole open printing, and therefore. I have, I have created this uh, this part of the open printing microconference where we will discuss the continuous integration. The slide deck, which I will be presenting, is not not written by me but by Mike. But unfortunately, Mike has another meeting and cannot do this presentation, so I will do the presentation, and. And so uh, I will tell here in the, with, this, uh, with these slides in which way in CUPS and in Mike's projects uh, continuous integration is done. So the first thing is uh, that, that all the projects are on GitHub and GitHub has a functionality that actions are triggered when you do a commit into into your github repository you can configure it that it only happens with master or with more branches or with every branch and so on every commit does the action you can also in the web interface of github trigger the action manually so that you can test the actions or or repeat the action when some dependencies have changed and so and And so uh, every commit which is done into CUPS and to, into other projects done by Mike triggers the actions and the automatic testing. And the first one is the, the code is built on different architectures. So, uh, and, and also the make test, the, the internal test procedures of the code these are usually procedures which run the code with defined input are uh, performed. Then these test procedures which come with the code, distro maintainers know them too, because when you when you when you build a distro package, you usually run them too to, to check the in in integrity of the package before the package gets up uploaded into the repositories of the distro. And so what is one is uh, dot slash configure, then make and then make test. This builds the code and runs the code internal test procedure. And this is usually done on different architectures, ARM, x86 and so, and also with different operating systems, depending uh, on the project, even also with Windows. And, uh, and with Windows means natively on Windows, not WSL. And uh, then another, an, another type of testing are uh, static analyzers. This means a program is reading the code, not compiling or running it, simply reading the code and analyzing its structure. 
and finding potential uh, potential uh, bugs in the code. For example, double freeze or missing freeze or or point or, or point or point time mismatches and and everything which could could result in some unwished behavior of the code, especially in, in crashes and security vulnerabilities. And these tools which Mike is using is, is CodeQL, Caverity, and LGTM. Whereas LGTM is, on, is discontinued, it is merged into GitHub, into GitHub's automatic testing procedures. But probably with this switch over, Mike will follow. So we have to, uh, to when, when we want to get, we cannot start as a new user into LGTM. It is already so far dis discontinued that the, in this system, they do not accept new users. We have already go the set, to, to you go with a successor in GitHub. And so these are tools which we all also can use too. And another thing, another method for testing is not only to, to, to build the source code itself, but also to package the source code. We are not, we are not doing the distro packaging. We do not do, do tests of, of packaging into RPM and Debian. This we leave to the distros. We test distribute, we, we package into distribution independent formats. This was which we will discuss in the end of the day today. For example, Docker, uh, OCI compliant uh, containers, but also Snap. And and there are others, app image, flat pack. In some cases, we can also do app image and flat pack, but not in many because we are not doing GUI. And flat pack is mostly for GUI user applications. It, it works in certain, in a certain manner also for uh, command line interface. So, so when we have, have command line tools, probably Mike is testing certain command line tools also as, as flat pack. And we unfortunately, we cannot ask Mike now what, what he's testing as flat pack because he does not do GUI. So all, all this we test, at least we build these containers. I don't know whether Mike is really uh, test, testing, running them uh, and, and seeing whether they actually do what they should do. And uh, to do this, to make a commit automatically triggering all this, uh, GitHub has a, a, a special functionality. You create in your repository a .github directory. And in this directory, a file named workflow, which is a YAML file. And in this YAML file with a special uh, syntax, you define which how you do the tests and this this consists of under which distro they should take place like ubuntu red hat SUSE, windows mac or so so and also what commands what dependencies you have which packages you install into your test distro environment and also which commands you execute for example, building the source code, make, uh, configure, make, make test, or, or running the configure or running the coverity utility, or something like that. Uh, and also how the test results are captured, so that you, could, for example, which log files are created, and also to determine what what means. How, how you determine whether the, the test has passed or failed. And, uh, and so everything which you can do with the command line, uh, configure, make, make, in install, con covariety, snapcraft, or building Docker packages or so, 
This you can control by this file and every commit, depending on how you configure your GitHub, will uh, trigger these tests. And there's a nice web interface where you get an overview over the results in the GitHub web interface. And uh, it also supports the, the, the introduction of credentials of private data like passwords and so, so that if a test involve, in, involves some in external server or some tool which, for which you need a license talk, token or so, this is also supported. So on the website of GitHub, you have an actions tab, and there you find the control for these tests and for of, and the access for their results. Now you see it's a little bit smaller, but I see you are all, you you got all a, a seat in the first class, so you you should be able to read it, and. And this is a, a YAML file, an, an, a, an example of a YAML file, which defines the tests for commits. It's probably of cups, no, no, of, of Puppel. It's, 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 the, it's the YAML file of Puppel, which describes the tests which are executed if you do a commit into Puppel. Puppel is the printer application library this is uh, uh, the base framework for printer applications. It provides the daemon, which emulates an IPP printer, the appropriate IPP interpre inter interpreter, the web interface, and also a framework for defining for, for, with, with uh, standard backends for, US, for USB and for non-IPP port 9100 printer access and, the posi and, and also some filtering and so, so that you can uh, more easily write printer applications without re repeating all the work which is needed again and again in every printer application which is, a, which is standard conforming. So you get really more or less automatically your print application standard conforming. And this is also used for all the six print application Mike, Mike has uh, mentioned before retrofitting, which I wrote, and also the two uh, print and HP, which Mike wrote, they all use Puppel. And the one for the Braille embossers will use it too. And so this is a very common tool. And here you see the test example. And you see uh, they're nicely written. You probably can understand it even without receiving a lot of expl explanation that there are different different uh, sections and each one starts with which this talk should should get installed and which packages should get installed and which commands should get uh, executed and so on. And this is an example how the GitHub web interface presents the results of the testing. And so you you have there this uh, there a nice structure which you can open and close the each test and see how how it came out and it it tells you also about success or failure and probably in case of failure you will also get an email one when the test have uh, when the test has has completed so that you know that you have made a commit which has failed. And also, if you do a pull request, a pull request on this project, on the on the repository which you offer for for the maintainer to uh, to merge, the tests can also be performed, 
And so the maintainer who is deciding on whether to accept or not to accept the, the pull request or to ask the, the contributor to, to fix things, he can also base himself already on the tests and also in the pull request itself, you see the tests running and the tests finished and the test with results and the pull request. So already as contributor, you see already whether your code is working uh, on all architectures and with all packaging formats and whatever before the maintainer has already seen your pull request while he's still on vacation or still swamped with other work. And so you can eat or already fix things because before the maintainer answers. So uh, here you have an overview about the, the printing projects maintained by Michael Sweet. And so you see which kinds of tests he does in each project. For example, in CUPS, he does builders, make, configure, make, uh, make test. And code analyzers, static analyzers, the three static analyzers, which I mentioned in the beginning. And then he and, and and then he wants also the full full cups automated tests in suite. Probably this is what 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 is is triggered when you do make test. As when I see uh, the cups the cups Debian package building during the build process after it has compiled, I see that the cups daemon has started on an alternative port, and then print jobs are sent and. The, the system waits for the print jobs to finish. And there's a lot of things which happen until the, until the package build continues with make install and with writing the binary package, Debian package files to complete. So this, and, 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 in, in, and this tests will probably also be one when you do a commit, not only when you do, when you build a distro package. And, then IPP EV self cert. This is a project which is on on the PWG GitHub. It is for testing a printer whether it complies with the standards for driverless IPP printing. And this is also tested. And after the usual test building and and static analysis, it it is one. No, not against a printer, it is run against the tool IPPF printer, which is a simple software emulator of an IPP printer, which is naturally standards conforming. And this way, the, the, the tool can do its actual task and test it by its actual task. And then we have also IPP sample libcups 3.x because we are splitted from 3.x on. Then LPrint, Puppet, printer applications, and PDFIO, the new PDF tool, which is which is plain C and not, not C, should, should replace QPDF in the printing workflow. And so it's you see that all will be automatically tested. And this is all of the slides from Mike, which, which I have. And now I want to know whether anyone has questions about it or anyone wants to volunteer help in coding the testing or configuring the testing. I don't know. It's perhaps more configuring than coding, scripting. And if there are also questions from the remote attendees, Monica. Let me check. No questions at present. Ah, yes. So testing is probably for the most people something very boring. <laughs> and they hope that this session is soon over and a, a new, more interesting session will start. Because what is the, what we should look for 
do you have anything to say? No, you no, are no, doing. No. <laughs> yes. Every, any what we should look for is that the whole open printing will receive a similar testing. This would mean the lip lip cups filters, lip PPD, uh, cups filters legacy, and cups browsed. These are the four the four projects in which I what I will split cups filters. So cups filters gets also split like cups, so that we separate off with the uh, PPD support, which uh, will be all hidden away in lip PPD. And then we have lip papel retrofit, and we have uh, CPDB lips and the CPD backend. So we have a lot of projects, and they all should receive an appropriate automatic testing because they are all more or less important in, in everyday operating systems. They all make up uh, components of, of the standard Linux distributions. Cups is uh, the CUPS uh, components are naturally the very most important because this is a co the core of the print environment. But for example, the, the LibCups filters is used for, for we do have a question from yeah. online. Ah, great. If you want to go ahead. Yes. What is the question? OK, so hi, Till. Uh, I have a question uh, about regression testing. Uh, are we going to move uh, regression tests from distributions to upstream test suites? Or uh, you, or we don't uh, want to have some regression testing in test suites itself. Uh, the, the testing, the testing which we are currently doing is t is partially also testing the functionality, especially the make test. And regression testing, you mean that perhaps that you have a known bug, and when it is fixed, that we exact, that we exactly try to test whether this known bug is 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 still not is done, is not coming up again. Or uh, what do you mean? For example, in GhostScript, they do it when when there's GhostScript bug on a certain document, they take the document into their repositories. And their test procedure then includes the document. And they have now hundreds of documents which are all tested through GhostScript when a commit is done. Do you mean things like that? Uh, yes. Yeah, so basically, in CUPS, I'm trying to uh, like move regression testing we have in distributions uh, move up to the upstream suite, and it would be great. Ah, yes. Whether, yes. Uh, whether other uh, other our projects uh, could do the same. Yes. If you are or testing, it, or or whether yes. it is uh, like uh, desired to do it. If you have testing procedures like scripts or so, which do this re regression testing, and you want that we include it. What you should do is to do a pull request on CUPS. I think you are on CUPS. A pull request on CUPS and, and tell that you have these and these and these procedures of re re regression testing. And you would like that these, that these testing procedures are included in the upstream CUPS package. So it, so it is desired. So. Uh, we, we can uh, move with uh, with this uh, uh, initiative as well, uh, like uh, including uh, regression test as well. Because currently we we are just uh, doing functionality testing uh, with a uh, upstream test suite. So have a regression test, it, it would be great as well. So thanks. Yes. For which this why you're working? Well, okay, I know. Uh, yeah, you know Fedora or Red Hat. You are Stene. <laughs> because yeah. you did not turn on the, the image. I do, did not know who is speaking. Ah, now uh, I see it. Yeah, yeah. I, I see it there. It's very small there in the upper left. Yes. So, <laughs> so <laughs> yes. 
So, uh, Rikersh, you probably, as at Red Hat, as Red Hat exists for so long time of Hedora, you have probably so many regression test procedures. Perhaps you should uh, report an issue or a, a pull request and suggest with this uh, to include the regression testing in the make test procedure of CUPS. So that these get also this gets also done, and probably you have also the same thing for cups filters and for for many other things which have to do which have to do with printing. And you're welcome that uh, you uh, make this code available to us. Okay, I, I will try to create some pull requests when I have time between uh, doing a release manager which I really yeah. like. For many Doing things it. which already do not have a make test at all, if you have some test procedures for them, like your regression testing, this could also be a base that we can start a make test for some, for, for some, for some of these tools. Okay. I just want to say we have one more minute. Yes. Yes, it's uh, it's coffee break after this. If we run a little bit over, it's no problem. So if you have more questions, Denek, you... Okay. Uh, if, uh, if you are okay uh, with it going over the break, I have more questions. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so one other is uh, how to deal with uh, security, uh, security, uh, uh, vulnerabilities uh, testing. Like uh, ah, usually, ah. usually you don't have, you don't want to have such uh, reproducers uh, to be publicly available. Does that GitHub Actions uh, have some private, uh, uh, private repo or access to private repo with uh, CVEs reproducers? Ah, uh, you mean you have a security vulnerable? vulnerability which is not yet public not yet fixed and you want to test on that one because if it is fixed then it's published the fix is there it's in the repository then we can put a test against this fix into the normal testing but well, well I'm, not, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure whether uh, we can be kind of like uh, feeling safe to uh, uh, to show even already fixed uh, reproducers because if we uh, if we introduce some regression and uh, someone use this reproducer or can use this reproducer and enhance it a little bit and get some vulnerability in cups or cups filters, it would be really bad for us, I think, in my opinion. So that's why I, I, to, I always uh, 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 all the even with yes. the public. You mean that when there are older versions around, which are not updated, even if the updates are all available, that we do not, we should not reveal by our testing procedure that there's a potential uh, vulnerability which could be still there in older, uh, in older versions. So you mean we need for that a certain amount of closed source tests, which no one knows about? Yeah, at least, uh, well, only only for uh, security vulnerabilities, because those reproducers can be reused, uh, as you mentioned, for, for older versions, or then can be used uh, for uh, creating uh, or trying uh, uh, newer attacks, like creating new, new reproducers and uh, trying, uh, trying new attacks to, to our software. Yes, one thing is about this kind of test. You are you are doing this regularly at at Red Hat, these kind of tests. Uh, yeah, we are doing so, such tests. And, yeah, uh, yes. and, and I, have really, I have really to ask the security uh, team of Canonical whether they do the same thing or whether they know about upstream projects who do that to find out how other upstream project projects do it, because I didn't come to the idea yet that one needs this kind of tests. I uh, Because my assumption was 
the, C the CVE is not published until for all the distros the fix is available, then all the distros make the fix available and then it gets published. And this is good enough, but I didn't hear before about that we need some tests which no one knows about because they are testing former security vulnerabilities. There I really to ask my colleagues at Canonical how this works. Hey, thanks. And uh, one more thing, uh, since uh, since you have uh, cups filters, I, I was always interested how you, uh, how you could um, verify the uh, the qu the quality of uh, of, cr of created uh, or um, converted files like uh, how to do a proper uh, proper testing whether created PDF is correct. Yes, one thing is I'm only using a bunch of files, like 10 files or so, and see whether it does the right thing, like changing page sizes, having the correct margins, being color or black and white, and so. I, I don't have this arsenal which goes script test. It would be nice if, if I, I would have that, and it, it, if it will be applied automatically. For this primitive way of testing, I'm very, I'm very happy that that I don't get many bug reports on file X Y Z is not printing correctly. But in general, it would be better if if there would be an automatic testing with a higher amount of files. And so I'm also open for contributions for a testing procedure. For example, that one has a repository with files. And in the repository, one has once, once all the files. It can be a GitHub repository, uh, a bunch of files, an easy way to add files if a bug gets reported, so that if a user attaches a file to a bug report, then we can add it as the Go script guys do. And also for each file with which options uh, it failed and with which filter it failed, so that we can reproduce the bug on the non, not yet fixed uh, st status of CUPS filters and hopefully not re reproduce the bug with a, fi with a fixed and any later commit of, bug of CUPS filters. Perhaps it's, oh, it would be also interesting when one asks the Go script folks how they do that. Okay, thanks. Thanks for your answer. Yes. Any other questions? There are no other questions, and we still have ten more minutes. Nine. Yes. To 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 rush down to the ground floor to get a coffee and get back because probably on this floor there's no coffee. Okay, everyone. We will be back in nine.